Luca and Kyrie. Um, um, I don't really know yet. Uh, we're gonna try to figure it out today for the most part. Uh, we just went over team stuff, not really directly just on them too. So we'll see what we go over today. And what have you guys seen from uh, on film? Because you guys get a chance to play this PJ and Gap and those guys. What they brought to the table for Luke and Kyrie as far as athletic ability, rim runs, all that. Business. Yeah, I mean, just what you said, uh, athletic ability, rim runs, a lot of defensive effort they got now. So um, they're a totally different team from the one we were playing earlier in the season. Karen, so if you could, given all the stuff that's happened this season with James joining and the streaks and, and then the up and down after the All-Star break, how would you, is there like one word, one sentence that you could sum this season up? Good question. I'll say roller coaster. Yeah. In many ways. How much uh, have you been in contact with Kawhi uh, as you guys have finished the season without him? And you know we're going to probably ask about that. How are we going into this matchup? Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, I haven't been in contact with him too much, at least about his, his health. So um, I'm sure Chief will be able to answer that. It, 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 um, you like playing, uh, obviously, it's two different looking teams now from previous times, but the court, Luca, um, I guess PHA still there. Like, is that facing that same player over and over again? But is that something you like? Is that something you look forward to? Would you like to see different about like, How do you view that in the playoffs? Do I like playing against Luca Doncic? <laughs> 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 the answer is no. I mean, like, the answer is no. You know, it's not fun. He's a great player. He makes great reads. He makes the decision, the right decision, you know, 90% of the time. So it's not it's not a fun task. But um, I love this game, and I love playoff basketball, and I love this challenge. And we're excited, you know, to play them for the third time. Like, that's fun to play a team for the third time in, what, five years, I think it is. So that's exciting. I guess the, the, the more so about the challenge of, of trying to beat him again um, after the last time. Like, is it, does it feel kind of like a chess match where pieces have been re you know, switched out, you gotta you know, figure out what goes where and then how to best play it out? For sure, for sure. And you know, that being the case, I'm assuming game one's gonna be more of a like, okay, what are y'all doing, what are we doing type of game. Um, so we'll see. Terrence, you, you never back down from Luca, but <clears throat> are you surprised at how much he talks to you? I know he talks to a lot of people, but especially you, for some reason, you guys go at it. Um, I'm not surprised only because that's just how it started with us from day one, so that's just what it is. But, um, you know, it's friendly competitiveness, and, you know, it's fun for me and him, I'm sure. Terrence, how do you view your role offensively in this series, knowing the amount of defensive attention that's going to be on your teammates? Uh, just do my job, what I've been doing. You know, trying to do all year, you know, make open shots, uh, get downhill in transition, get extra opportunities for my team on the glass, and yeah, stay ready to do whatever. With how, with how well you shot the ball down the stretch of the season, did you notice teams closing out harder and creating opportunities for you to attack those closeouts? I mean, yeah, it was way different in the beginning of the season. They were just putting the five on me and leaving me open. Um, and, you know, now it's a different story. What, what are the unique challenges of playing a team who even from the three times that you guys played them in the regular season have changed so much since then? Like, you guys haven't played since the trade deadline. They've obviously changed a lot. Like, what are the unique challenges that that brings? Um, a lot because, like you said, it's almost like playing a whole different team. So, and I believe one of the times or two of the times you played them without Kyrie, too. So, um, it's just, it's different. You know, it's a whole different game plan. Um, but these coaches are ready, you know, to put that in. Is, is there anything you can even take from those games, like to this series, or is it just start from scratch? Um, definitely, I think so. I think you know their style of play is still very similar. Um, you know, they just fill different roles. You know, they still have a speed roller in there. They still have a Grant Williams S type guy and PJ Washington who can catch and shoot threes. Um, you know, he's just a little more athletic, but uh, you know, it's still the same same style of play. I would say, but. We can take some stuff from the game. Kind of following up on what Joey said about the attention that other guys are going to get defensively. Like, do you come into this series knowing that you're going to have to be maybe more of an off ball, uh, more cut guy, more aggressive uh, to, to find your shot, knowing how they might defend you and the rest of the guys? Um, I mean, we'll see how game one goes, but I'm 
I'm, I'm ready for whatever. It doesn't matter if I just don't care. How often do you go into a playoff series and you play with so many great guys? A lot of those guys, they're not, you know, they're not in the league now, but you've been in touch with them. Like, how much do you kind of tap into your former vets uh, going into a playoff series? Um, not much, but nice to bring it up. That's something I probably will do this week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> where have you grown the most since, like, say, three years ago, where? I think you only played 14 seconds in game one, and then as the season grew, or the series grew, you got in there more. Where do you think you're stronger than you were, say, three years ago? I think my game's a lot better. Um, I think my mental's a lot better. Just being able to, uh, you know, mentally put myself in a situation where it's not, oh my God, I'm in the playoffs, but it's more, you know, I'm, I'm here, I belong here, and I'm excited to be here. And, um, I guess like the nerves and the jitters are just way down. You know, it's not the same how you know it used to be in the beginning. But I mean, that's I guess a natural feeling. So I guess I grew mentally the most. I read somewhere where you were trying to play more off of two feet this year, and it was referenced with Jimmy Butler and Luca. Did you watch a lot of Luca film from an offensive standpoint on how I can do <coughs> this, how I can do that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I did that, and I did a good job this year of you know playing off two feet as much as I could. It's not easy to just switch that, you know, when you're used to playing off one foot almost your whole life. But um, yeah, I feel like I did a good job with that. You know, I got a few one-legged Lucas shots in this year, so. <laughs> does, that, work. does it help you understand, I, this might be a crazy, does it help you understand what, maybe help you defend better, knowing uh, what he's nah, trying to do? I, I, yeah. It's a whole different. Yeah. <laughs> Tess, do you see yourself defending Luca and Kyrie at times? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we switched one through four anyway, so I could be defending anyone on the perimeter. What's it like trying to defend someone like Kyrie who could make shots from all angles? As well as Luka, but in his case? It's difficult, for sure, but um, I'm going to try and make it difficult for him, but not many people can do that, so we'll see where this goes. I'm excited. I haven't been able to experience some of the, the playoff 40 bombs that Luka can throw. Is it easier to go next play, he's going to make those tough shots? Just move on. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, because when he has those big first quarters, you know, back then it was like, oh, you know, what's going on? But you know, we we know he's capable of that. But we also know when he does that, we can also win the game too. So, you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm assuming it'll be less panic mode when, if that happens. How so early, early earlier in the years when you did play, you felt kind of the gravity of, oh, that's a, another big shot, another big quarter. You you felt that? Yeah. Did you feel? I do, but I get a good one on the court, so. How big of a difference is it going to be actually having a full, packed out home crowd? Because obviously the bubble was the bubble, and then in 2021 you guys had some cardboard cutouts still out there. Yeah, um, I mean, we, it won't be different for us, um, but I'm sure it'll be different for them. They didn't get to experience that here, so uh, we have. So I don't know if that means anything to them. Terrence, we'll I'm sorry. Terrence, uh, the defense throughout the season has kind of been up and down at times. Where, do you, where would you rate where it's at now? Uh, it's hard to say without, you know, being wild here. So, I don't know. I can't give an answer to that. So, he's kind of the the glue on the defensive end, so to speak, in that regard? 100%, yeah. And, and Terrence, talking about defense, Last question. going against Kyrie and Luka, and when they make tough shots, because they're going to make tough shots even if you're in the grill, wherever you pick them up. Do you guys practice not being demoralized when they make tough shots and continue to get back on offense and run your stuff? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we definitely talk about it. That's something we go over. Um, that's definitely a mentality we want to have. Thanks, Let's get ready for Hoop Jab.